Hi, Jamie J. Miller, Functional Diagnostic Health Practitioner. And this is my YouTube channel. How exciting. <laughs> if you'll do me a favor, if you are here and you are watching this and you especially would like to know more about functional health diagnostics and leveling up in your health in that way, and all the things that come along with it, the mindset, the techniques, the supplements, everything that comes along with that, changing your future health identity, then this is my channel and I would really love it if you subscribed below. Um, if you also would hit the bell thingy and you would be able to get notifications of when I post these videos, I try to post them at least once a week, or at least that's the goal. And I wanna to continue to try to do that and grow my channel, and you can help me with that. So again, hit that like button, subscribe button, and the bell that's somewhere or whatever if you wanna get notifications of all my videos. So today, I am pretty stoked about this topic of, of conversation today. Usually, I do not like to talk about things when I'm going through them. Um, I just don't. Um, I think we're a lot of us are kind of that way, especially when we are trying to educate people and trying to help people in their own journey. And when we are struggling, because we all do, I mean, just because I'm the one sitting here talking to you on the camera doesn't mean that I have it all figured out. Um, but generally what I like to do is when I'm experiencing something to get through it, and then the hindsight is what I use to help people, encourage people, to give people a different perspective, to help them level up. Because that's honestly what I do as a, as a functional health practitioner, is that whether it's my one-on-one -on -one groups or my semi-guided group, um, my one-on-one -on -one clients or my semi-guided groups, I am helping them level up. And I boldly say, even though I get a little bit of pushback, um, I boldly say that my programs, whether one-on-one -on -one or group guided, all work. All of them work for everybody. The difference being a couple of things. One being that the limiting beliefs of that person and the environment that they're in, and if they're not willing to make changes to get out of that environment, now that could be their actions, not willing to change at all, but expecting the same results. Um, they don't really, they're not consistent with their supplements. They're not consistent with any diet changes. They're not consistent with, with, with creating a new environment around them to help them get to a different level because you can't keep your environment. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And then secondly, that once they get to, you know, past level one, it's like, ta-da, I'm here and I don't want to do anything else. And they don't want to continue the process to keep leveling up. And in your health, especially in, um, in the aging process, you have to come to the understanding that it's a continual process. And I say that a lot, process, process, process. And pill, you know, process over pill, process over pill. Um, so today I want to talk about that environment issue and how that can get icky and sticky and something that you can um, recognize. And then once you recognize it, then you can figure out how to respond to it and then keep going because we don't want it to pull us back. And that's typically what happens in these situations. So um, the reason why I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about this, even though it's something I'm going through right now, and I will explain that in a second, is because I've gone through it before probably multiple times in the 23 plus years that I've been doing this, because anytime you're in a self-serving uh, health and wellness or helping people get to a higher level, anytime you're in that kind of service, you're going to experience what I'm going to talk about today. And since I make a living at helping people level up, and therefore am constantly trying to do that myself because I believe in it so much, then um, I've obviously experienced this throughout my, uh, throughout my practice, throughout my adult life for the last two, and two plus decades. One time in particular that really helps me kind of give you an example of what I went through is when I started in the health and wellness industry, I was 19 years old and very young and back then google was just really starting to be a thing and uh there was no pinterest there was not a personal trainer in your pocket there were not apps 
The iPhone was not what it is today. This was 1999. So it was a huge difference in the world and environment we live in now because that environment has what? Leveled up. So because it's constantly happening and around you, um, either somebody is around you that's leveling up or you're in, you know, or things, the world is constantly leveling up. That's just evolution. All right. So you're either moving forward or backwards. That's just the way that it goes. And that's always a choice. It's always a choice. So when I started, you know, with what we knew then, the research was eat less, move more. That was the message. Eat less, move more. And when I think back on that now, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe we said that. But we did. And that's what we knew. All right. And that's what I built my community on. And I mean, I grew, grew a successful private training facility, 5,000 square foot training private training facility in my hometown with this message. This is how I built this community. The environment that I had cultivated was around that message. Eat less, move more, eat less, move more, eat less, move more. And you will have the body that you want. And you will have the body that you want. And you will have the body that you want. Nothing about the functions of the body, nothing about the feels of the body, really. Because you kept saying is once you look the way you wanted to look, then you would feel a certain way. You would be happy. You would have all the things that you want if you looked a certain way. And that was the message. That was the message that was put forth um, in our market. And that's the message that I presented until I was around 32 years old, 33 years old, and I had after my second and final pregnancy. And that eat less, move more wasn't working. And I started to open up my mind. I was completely def desperate. I was devastated. I was like, how can I preach to these people, eat less, move more, when it is not working, it is not enough for me. And I felt like the biggest fraud on the planet. Like I, these people are paying me to um, to elevate them and the information that I have to elevate them is not working. It's no longer working. And so um, I was really scared and I didn't know what to do. I had gone to the typical medical system, doctors, lab tests, whatever, and none of that helped, made it worse. So I was like, okay, time out. There's got to be a better way. So I started studying and this is where I learned about liver detoxification and gut health. All right. But at that time in a very small town in Oklahoma, nobody was talking about this. Nobody was talking about this. This was 2000 and what did I say? I'm see, I started to, so 2015, 16. Okay. Nobody was talking about functional health. And if they were talking about gut health, it was usually associated with a probiotic put out by, you know, a multi-level marketing company. Okay. So everybody was really just, just on the verge of this. So I went back to school. I studied, I got my certification. I got, um, you know, more immersed into it until, once you know better, you do better. And so it's like I walked into my gym one day and told all my private training clients, group training um, clients, you guys eat more and I mean, eat less and move more is not going to cut it. It's all wrong. And you would have thought, I mean, the look on their face was just like, uh, what? And it, they weren't very receptive. Now there was a handful that were. And to this day, I am so grateful to those people. I can see their faces right this second. They just jumped on the train with me. They trusted me even though I was new. And I got to learn so much by experiencing the functional diagnostic space with these, with this handful of clients that were willing to, um, willing to try this. But most of them were just at the same place. They were like, I get you. There's, this is not enough. This is not working for me. I want more. I, there's got to be something better than this. And so they hedged the way with me and I become, became more and more uh, skilled at what I do and better and better at it to the point where at which I went virtually and went out into the world and the virtual space and began to get clients all over the world. Um, and I did this up until about 2019. And but during this shift, during this shift from eat less, move more to functional health, diagnostics, detoxification, gut health, all of these things, stool test. Um, there was a lot of people in my environment that didn't accept it. And I, being a Pisces, and yes, I am a Christian and I believe both in astrology because who created the planets and the earth? Um, I put up walls. 
as the only way I knew how. Like some relationships I just cut off and some relationships I just put them in a box and was like, nope, I'm not gonna talk to these people about it because they're not open-minded to it. And it really began to uh, recultivate the my friend circle and it was really hard. And I don't know that I handled it with very much grace. It was almost like, well, if you're not gonna support me, I'm not gonna support you. Or, you know, if you're not gonna support me in this, I'm not gonna be your friend. And it was super immature. And it's not like I hadn't experienced that type of rejection before in my practice, because some people don't even like to eat, eat less and move more. You know, that was just the basics. And now I was asking people to deepen their horizons and have deeper conversations around their health and what's going on with it. And most people are very superficial. Um, and I think that's because we live in a very exhausted society. We are exhausted emotionally. We are exhausted physically. And our, um, and so they just didn't want to hear that what they had actually put forth the energy and effort in doing was not right or it was all in vain, which it wasn't. Anytime you move more, it's never necessarily in vain. Um, but they didn't want to hear that. They weren't ready for it. They weren't in space for it. And some people, to be honest with you, just do not want to level up. I personally believe that everybody wants to level up. Not everybody is willing to do what it takes to level up. And so um, very few people just want status quo lives um, in some way, shape or form, whether it's marriage, parenting or health or or um, finances, they want to level up. OK, but they don't always really, truly want to do what it takes. And that comes back to their limiting beliefs um, around who they are, what they can do, what they've done in the past, what they're programmed to believe their subconscious. OK, so I talk about limiting beliefs extensively in both of my programs because of this. And again, I've said both of my programs are work. And they work for everyone in some way, shape, or form. But the only difference in the people getting results and the ones that don't are their limiting beliefs and environment, as well as them not choosing to continue to progress forward and evolve and level up. All right, that's the only difference. And it's not my programs. It's not about me. It's about the individual and them deciding that life is short. So this happened and then I progressed in my practice beautifully until about 2019 and some crazy things happened in our lives and we decided to sell our gym. We sold our home property. We took everything else we owned. We sold that. We took our kids, our two dogs, we loaded them in an RV and we traveled around the United States. This is pre COVID. Okay. Pre COVID. And, um, and there was a lot of, 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 you know, shock and awe in my community at that point. There were people that supported it and people didn't. And it was, again, it was so shocking to me because the people that I thought would just be ex so excited for us, there were some of them that just weren't. And they were, um, they were just very rejected about it. And then the people that I thought that wouldn't be excited were. And I kind of leaned on them in this process because it was scary. And that's what happens when you level up, guys. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. We're going to come back to that. All right. So that was another period of time where I went through that. Don't think I handled it very well either because it was almost like we're leaving town. Peace out. Care if I last if I ever talk to you again. And these are people I cared about. It was just you guys with my limiting beliefs at the time it was the only way I knew how to handle it. Okay. It was hurtful and it just defined who, who our relationship in one moment. And that's not fair. That's not fair. And we're going to talk about that more in a second. So um, fast forward to we traveled for a while and then COVID hit. And then everything changed. Because ultimately we were going to go back to Oklahoma. And we were going to restart our gym there and just pick back up basically semi where we left off with a little twist and things that we had learned along the way. Um and because we loved our friends, we loved our community. We did not like the city that we lived in. It was just very, um, it was just a lot with a small town in the Southern States. Don't get me started. So we decided because of COVID, it was not the time to be opening up a gym anywhere. And we relocated to Arizona, still staying in the RV in case that we decided that we didn't want to, but we did put semi roots down. And we began to rebuild our lives. Jeff and I literally went from scratch. We re rebuilt our lives as a family. We re rebuilt our lives um, financially. We rebuilt our lives um, on every level. 
and um, I was offered an opportunity to work in corporate. It was not my plan. It happened, and it just happened to be, now looking back, I see the, the purpose of it, but it just happened to be just really what was best for us at the time. Income-wise, stability-wise, insurance, there's a lot of things. And I had never worked in corporate before, and I had never done this particular job before. Um, knew not a thing about it, and it progressed very quickly. 60, 70 hour work weeks. I was the only working, only one working because Jeff was taking care of the girls. We were living in an RV out by, you know, in, in a place we didn't know anybody. We were starting to build friendships, and when we began to build friendships in our circle and our new environment, we did not build them around Jamie and Jeff, the fitness people, Jamie, the functional diagnostic health practitioner. No, I built it on Jamie the nine to five corporate girl. And um, that is who my new environment was. I didn't even talk about health and wellness. I still did um, stay in my practice. I stayed up to date in my certifications and everything. And I worked one-on-one -on -one with very highly vetted only referrals that I knew people that were willing to put in the investment time and energy to make the changes. So I still did that, but I didn't talk to anybody about it. Um, I built a whole entire friend circle around Jamie, eight to five corporate girl, um, bought a house with Jamie, eight to five corporate girl in a new community as Jamie, eight to five corporate girl. Um, this was my new identity to them, but it wasn't my new identity to my soul. And I knew that, but it was just easier. And so this was my environment. Fast forward to May of 2022. I lost my brother tragically, my only sibling, my connection to my childhood, every memory I have as a child, he is in it. And um, he was very, very important to me, very close to me and loved me intensely um, as he only knew how. And um, it was my first experience with losing somebody of that caliber, of that in big importance to me that impacted me in a way that I was not prepared for. Sorry, I know you can see that I'm starting to tear up. It will pass. So, um, and I'm not ashamed of it because this is the love that I had for him and it bubbles up in my eyeballs, okay? So, um, the the shock of losing him was very deep and it, um, it only comes when you are deeply connected to somebody. And I don't mean just because we were brother and sister. There was just a lot more deeper connection between Jared and I. And, um, and I miss him dearly. And so the pain that I went through to try to um, process this was very difficult. And so then now I have built this, this environment has seen me go through something traumatic. And, um, you know, it also shifted things because I began to shift as a person based off experiencing that. But you know, it took me until, see that happened in May of 2022 until almost a year later, February of 2023, before I began to learn that I can experience him in the heavenly um, relationship, a new way that I can tap into my a new level of love and relationship with him at a different level and in a different way and i remember distinctly when that moment happened and he was just like what do you not he as in i couldn't hear him audibly but i felt his presence just say dude you know i love you more than and he did he loved me more than most people on the earth other than maybe his son and my mom um and our mom and, you know, he's just like, you're not living your purpose. What are you doing? And, you know, I really don't talk about this story very often. But in that moment, I was like, okay, let's go. Let's do this. Let's go. And I immediately quit my corporate job, which was obviously after I talked to my family about it. <laughs> because, especially my husband. And thank God. Gosh, I uh, thank God that I have a husband that is, that is supportive. Um, but we elevated to that place. We elevated to that place. And so we didn't start there. That's a whole nother topic. But anyways, and so now I'm experiencing it and I'm seeing this environment that I created around corporate Jamie and Jamie the before trauma and kind of Jamie through trauma into Jamie that is empowered and really purpose filled at this moment, almost to the point where I know I'm annoying, but I can't even help it. And I also know that I need to protect that. 
So that is who I'm talking to today because I'm starting to see and notice how people are responding to that. They don't know how to relate. They don't know how to respond to empowered, purpose-filled Jamie. They don't. And um, there's many ways that they will react to it. And there's many reasons for it. And so the first thing I want you to do is that if you are somebody who has a bigger purpose than just status quo living, if, you're, if your purpose is to have a better marriage, it doesn't even have to be anything big. If your purpose is to be a better parent, if your purpose is to have better finances, and don't let anybody tell you that that is a, a shallow purpose because it is not. Um, money is for good and money is for evil. You get to decide. Um, if you are somebody that is is leveling up in your pers- purpose of as a Christian, um, if you are somebody that's leveling in your purpose in all of those areas, which I would definitely say I, that's where I'm at right now, and for sure somebody who is wanting to level up in their idea of health as a whole being, not as a physical body that needs to look a certain way. Um, If you are that person, then you're who I am talking to because I guarantee you that you will have pushback from your environment. All right. So what I want to do first is show you that you need to recognize it. Just recognize it at first. Start to take in data. This person is acting a little bit different. This person, these are going to seem shallow and they are. So we're not going to get upset about them. But this person is not liking my Facebook post about um, my health and wellness. Or they're no longer using a heart. We've moved on to the thumbs up. You know what I'm saying? Like you see these little things, you know. And when you're in their presence, they've shifted. They're kind of irritated. They don't know how to talk to you because you're leveled up and you're trying to push forward and you're trying to elevate yourself. And when you do that, you can't live in the negative. You have to just kind of go forward with that. And they don't like that because their main conversations around you might have been, we both have this issue. We both have this issue. We're both mad at our husbands. We're both sick and sick. We're both tired. We're both in corporate. We both hate our jobs. We both this, we both that. Very little did you have in common maybe that was surrounded about your praises, your victories, instead of your victories? It happens, okay? This is, again, learn from my mistakes. This is normal. This is the environment that you've created. And so when you're in that environment and you decide to move up, the door has to open and then the draft comes in. And when the draft comes in, they don't like it. They don't like it. They don't know why they don't like it. They're trying to like it. They love you. You love them, but they just don't like it. Because why? It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable for them. It's uncomfortable for you. All right? So we're going to recognize it. Now, with family, I'm talking about the people inside your household, your your spouse and your kids. You will want to have conversations with them around this. Hey, this is important to me, and I understand that it is going to draw energy Because you only have so much energy a day. 100% of energy you have when you start your day. Some of that energy is going to your kids. Some of that energy is going to your spouse. Some of that energy is going to your work. Some of that energy is going to your finances. Some of that energy is going to your dogs. Some of that energy is going to your friends. But you only have so much. So you have to pull energy when you expand the need for the energy in a certain area. You have to pull energy from somewhere. Okay? And you're maybe going to pull a little bit from multiple places. Um, So I'm having a conversation with my husband. And I'm like, I need um, to pull energy a little bit from here. Can you support me in this? And he was like, absolutely. Um, He was not always that way. But in this case, he was. My kids, now that they're old enough, I can have that conversation with you. Especially my 15-year-old. And she, oh, she has been amazing. And I can come to her and start to really talk to her about these uncomfortable feelings I'm talking to you about. About what it's like when you feel sad that you, actually, you feel so elated and emotional about moving to a place of purpose. And you want to share that with everybody, but not everybody can handle that. And you start to see who can and who can't. And sometimes that's painful. That's just the way it is. And I'm starting to share this with her, so hopefully to help her in the future, because not everybody is willing to level up, and that's just the way that it is. That's just the way that it is, guys. It doesn't make them wrong. It doesn't make them right. It just is. So first step is recognizing that, having conversations with the people that it matter, and then deciding if there's any of your friend group that you need to have that conversation with. But for me, sometimes it's just recognizing that that's not the place that they're in, 
and that may not change for a while and it's just going to be okay. If they give you a thumbs up, if they don't respond at all, if they don't support you in any way, shape or form, and then there's the times where you know that they're speaking negatively about it. You know, she's crazy. She's crazy for, you know, packing up her kids and selling all her things. She's crazy. Do you guys, I knew the people that were saying that back home. And these were people that loved me dearly. And these were people that in, in their own way, their own limiting beliefs were pushing them onto me. They would be crazy to themselves for doing that. But they didn't know the whole picture. They didn't know my heart. They didn't know my story. And apparently they didn't know me either because I'm going to tell you one thing. It may not have been the easiest decision, but because of who I am, I'm going to make it work. Because of how much I love my family, I'm going to make it work. And there was very little faith in me. And I think that's where it hurts the most. All right. So, but what you're going to do is you're going to experience this from people and you're just going to recognize. Okay. Once you recognize then you are going to um, make decisions on how you want to deal with those relationships. Do you want to have conversations or to those people? Or do you want to just acknowledge that this is where they're at and this is where you need to draw the line or the boundary? And really what I tell you is that they will reveal themselves to you. When you start not being able to put as much energy and effort into that one thing that affects them, you will see how they respond. Do they get, um, do they act in a way of jealousy? Do they act in a way of, well, this is bothering me? Um, are they less supportive of you because you're not providing the same amount of relationship and energy towards them? You will see it. Again, the point is just to acknowledge it, not to react, just to acknowledge it. And then at the time that you decide that you want to react, just do it with grace and love and, um, you know, again, you can decide to have a conversation with them or you can decide that, no, I just need to pull back. And if they don't understand, then I'm going to have to be okay with that. One thing I want you to know and understand is when you do that, when you're putting all your energy over here in this basket to grow and elevate and you're trying to do it for, sometimes it's even for a really good purpose um, and you, you want for them to come along, um, but they're just not at that place, then... When you have a lull or the break in, in your time, because if you're do, doing it with a business or whatever, and you, you know, you're going to have ebbs and flows where you're busy, 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 and then you're not. You can't sit in your office and pout because they're not calling you and asking for you for coffee anymore, okay? If you decide that you want to have that relationship and move forward with that, then you have to reach out to them and ask them for coffee and move forward if that's what you want to do, okay? Um... The ones that are there the whole time that are supportive all the time, I am lucky right now to have one in particular. She just still contacts me every week, you know, and let's move, let's do this together. Whatever the, you know, our relationship action is. Typically, we tend to walk together. And, you know, she still checks, you know, is this good for you? Let's still make this happen. And that's, you know, you'll start to cling to those relationships. But the, okay, so we're recognizing and then we're deciding how we want to respond to that. And then we want to get the support somewhere else. Okay, because you need support. I am huge on community, but sometimes when you are leveling up, your environment can't support you because they are they are supporting the old you. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. They're supporting the old you. They don't know how to elevate with you. It's just it's just the way that it is. So sometimes you have to find support. And a lot of times you have to find that by investing in it. If you have marriage issues, hire a therapist. If you have mindset issues, hire a coach. If you have health issues, hire a guide. If you have um, parenting issues, find people with the same deal. Read books, get, you know, get therapists for your kids, whatever that is. Find people and invest in them that can support you while you level up. And a lot of times, I'll be honest with you guys, you got to pay for this. You've got to invest in this. You're rarely going to find just that BFF that can handle this level of support for you. Okay? So you have to be willing to invest in it. So now you're going to invest in it and have the support that you need. I want you to hear me more than anything. And this is where I failed before. A community is so dang important. And there's still a place for the people that are learning to, to grow and give them time, learning to grow with new you, okay? Because you're never going to go back there. You can't. 
Once you evolve, you can't go back the way you were. It's not possible. So they're learning to, and you'll, have, you'll realize which ones that are actually just need a little bit more time. And they're going to love you no matter what, but they need a little bit more time. Invest in people that is, are going to pull you up. Because these people un, uh, subconsciously are trying to tug you back down because it's comfortable. Okay? They don't mean to. Some of them do. You know the ones that are jealous. You know the ones that are mad because you're not doing more for them. Um, but beyond that, most of them are just, they don't even re recognize it. So hire people to, 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 on the other end to help pull you. Like, eh, come on, girl. Come on, girl. You got this. Because God would not have placed it on your heart. I do not believe this. God would not place it on your heart if it wasn't meant for you. And he does not, he does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. He does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And in order to get qualified, you have to continually level up. And it's unfreaking comfortable. All right? Can I get an amen? All right, so I'm going to wrap this up with the last point, which is move forward. Keep going. Don't let this community environment, old environment, pull you, suck you back in. Recognize it. Figure out what you're, how you're going to handle it with grace. And then hire someone for support. If you can't hire for someone for support, then you better stay in it with, with feeding your mind with good. Watch this video. Um, you know, subscribe to this channel because I'm going to help you do it. Elevate yourself with books, podcasts, whatever you need to do or hire someone to help you. And then keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep failing forward. Keep moving forward. Keep learning. Keep evolving. Because one thing I learned through my bub's death is that life is short. And and then yesterday, you know, we just had a mass, another mass shooting in the United States. And we don't know what each day is going to bring. And so live a life of purpose um, at this moment, at this time, even when it's hard, even when it's uncomfortable. And that's what I want to see for you ultimately. All right. I am going to wrap this up and say, if you are looking to level up in your health from a functional diagnostic perspective, stay on this channel first and foremost, reach out to me. There will be ways to reach out to me below. If you're interested in one of my one-on-one -on -one programs or my group guided programs, um, you can find out about that in the links below. Everything will be low, be below. But the main thing is, is subscribe to this channel and I'm excited because the best is yet to come. And I know I keep saying that, but that's what happens when you continue leveling up and failing forward and evolving into the greatest version of you that ultimately God created you to be.